Hello and welcome to Lockdown, Greenless regular show on coronavirus, capitalism and solidarity. I'm Zebedee Parks and on today's episode we're going to be looking at issues around refugee rights and the coronavirus. Right now there are hundreds of people currently in detention centres, alternative places of detention and they're offshore and we know that in detention centres this is an infection risk. We've seen the United Nations have put out a statement calling on countries to release people from detention as detention centres are a hotspot for the spread of the virus. We've seen more than a thousand medical professionals across Australia call for the immediate end of detaining refugees and people seeking asylum in Australia because of the health risks this is causing, especially at a time of coronavirus. We've already seen a guard has tested positive, an alternative place of detention app in Brisbane. We know that refugees have been held in hotels in places such as the Mantra Hotel in Melbourne, where people do not have access to physical distancing, cannot physical distance, are often around guards who are not social isolating themselves, are often being forced into conditions where multiple people are having to share single rooms. And many of these people in places like the Mantra Hotel and the Kangaroo Point Hotel in Brisbane are people who've come to Australia under the former medical evacuation legislation, in which case many of them have major health issues such as asthma and diabetes and issues which make them put them in a very high risk category for being susceptible to the coronavirus. And people in detention have been protesting this. We've seen protests happening in Villawood the other day with more than 200 people have begun a hunger strike. We've seen protests in Melbourne's Mantra Hotel where people have been started protesting from last month. We've seen protests up in Brisbane as well at the Kangaroo Point Hotel up in Brisbane. Another issue is that people who are out of detention, people who are on different visas such as temporary protection visas, do not have access to things such as Medicare, such as Centrelink. In a lot of cases, people are in positions where they may be losing their job or may actually be illegal for them to do the job they've currently been doing for the past, in some cases, several years in Australia, and they cannot access unemployment benefits. These are people who have to pay rent. These are people who will be denied Medicare assistance. Asylum Seeker Resource Centre is putting out an urgent call for our donations to help people with urgent housing needs, with food supply drop-offs and various other essentials that the government is refusing to provide. And also, they've been running a petition that they've just sent off to the parliament calling for everyone to be able to access benefits such as Centrelink and Medicare. So right now, solidarity is needed more than ever. And we're seeing some interesting expressions of solidarity, especially last weekend on Sunday, which was Palm Sunday, which has traditionally been a very diverse and multi-faith action for refugee rights. Of course, at the moment, we cannot go out and protest on the streets because of the lockdown around coronavirus, and we don't want to be spreading the virus. And we've seen activists come up with some quite interesting ways of protesting. The most common has been people holding up homemade signs and placards of hashtags, such as justice for refugees and free the refugees and posting them on social media. A notable contribution has been from the Australian Medical Student Alliance, where numerous members have made their signs and held them up and they've been posting them on Facebook. And here are a few images of them holding up signs and images from different people around the country that have been coordinated by the various refugee rights action networks and coalitions. We also saw in Perth the Justice for Refugees group organise an online virtual rally and one of the things that they were able to do was share the voices of people who are currently in detention or are in the community on various visas and actually ha allow them to speak an anonymously. So we're going to run a bit of audio from one of the speeches that was given at this online virtual rally. Brothers and sisters, first of all, thank you so much for your kind support and solidarity. It is very sad that after almost seven years, we are still being left behind in PNG especially in this period of coronavirus. Lockdowns have started and happening across the world, causing people understandable anxiety and stress. But for us, this lockdown is not new. It started when we arrived in Australia, in Christmas Island. Recent, recent international border closes also leave us with little hope of resettlement until this health situation is finished. We are in a great fear and at risk of being left abandoned forever in PNG. And adding more stress to this devastating situation, the new problem of coronavirus make us bad to worse. 
We do not know if it gets worse, how we are going to survive in this country with lack of medical facilities. Already one case has been reported in PNG and we do not know how many aren't reported. If it started to spread across PNG, there will be a serious consequences. All of us are in a great fear in every second and every moment. This is the time that, that the Australian government should take appropriate action to end this crisis, which is being long due. That was from a man who is currently in PNG. We're also seeing a number of activists are trying to organise car cavalcade protests where people get within a car and put signs on their cars and drive around to protest. And it's something that happened in Sydney the other day with no issues from the police and had a, quite a few dozens of people driving cars. The Sydney protest was a broad demonstration for workers' rights. However, in Melbourne, they organise a car cavalcade in solidarity with people currently protesting inside the Mantra Hotel in Melbourne. Police stopped this car cavalcade and arrested one of the organisers and charged him with inciting a protest. I mean, I think this is kind of interesting that in some states, people are able to use these car protests for issues around workers' rights and so forth, yet as soon as it's a protest around refugee rights, the state is cracking down and stopping people protesting in solidarity of refugee rights and yet they are refusing to release people from detention. And quite frankly, I mean, if people are not released from detention, this is gonna be a serious health risk, both for people in detention, who are some of the most vulnerable communities and will have a catastrophic medical emergency on our hands, and also generally for the community as well, because I mean, we're talking about people going in and out of detention, such as various service workers and guards who, in a lot of reported cases, are not self-isolating. They're not practicing physical distancing, so we're at a position where the government's current racism and fear mongering that they've been exercising for decades towards refugees is that by them keeping that up is putting people in detention at grave risk, but also the spreading the virus in communities as well. So that's this episode of Green Left's Lockdown Report. We'll be trying to share more about what's happening in the refugee rights struggle and finding ways to get active and get involved, as always, to support this content regularly coming out and sharing that activist angle on news as opposed to just what the corporate media is sharing. Become a supporter today online and share this episode. Thank you.